now to stream. Just figuring out my tech. Good afternoon, everybody. Saturday afternoon. Always happy to be here. See some of the comments start coming through. Let me see if I can pick the stream up from my profile and share it into my free group. Um, here it is. Maybe copy back into the group. So I started the video a few minutes early because I have lots of tech and no script at all. <laughs> I got a blank page where I intended to have a script for you. So I know what I'm talking about today, but um it's going to be a little bit more unscripted than normal, um, and that's okay. Today's one of those days. Uh, I do have a lot of really scripted planned content coming up for the next few weeks. Uh, January's a really, really busy month um, with me now teaching book publishing um, to organizations and individuals, um, and... Uh, well, you know, it, everything's everything's coming up again, <laughs> starting anew for 2021. So happy new year, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and for watching today. I'm really, really excited about the subject and the topic today, um, which is is something that that a lot of people don't really think about when they think about um, publishing a book. For most people, and the reason why I'm broadcasting today on my profile and on my page rather than in the free group directly, because, you know, there's only so many channels I can broadcast to at once um, through StreamYard at this level today. <laughs> um, uh, the reason why I'm broadcasting through these channels instead of through the group is because so many people are thinking about publishing a book using ebooks and PDF documents, and um, even audiobooks, uh, podcasts, um, podcast interviews and recordings that are being downloaded and sold as audiobooks. Um, people are using ebooks and, and PDFs, as I mentioned, in their funnels, in their sales funnels, and um, giving them away as lead magnets, uh, which is always recommended. It's a great idea to give away your expertise, to teach people, to show people what they're going to get in advance if they hire you directly. If you're a consultant or speaker um, or expert of any kind, even if you're an artist and you struggle to see the idea of how your print book could be valuable, um, of course, there are many print books that share art, <laughs> that share visu visuals instead of text heavy. Um, there are lots of books that are not um, story books that are not either nonfiction or fiction, but um, books like cookbooks and journals and books that are um, planners, like uh, considered low content or zero content books um, like um, yeah, planners, uh, journals, uh, even even inspiring books with blank pages for specifically for journaling. Um, there's so many ways to take your existing book, which is just an ebook or or a digital book of some form, either audio or um, uh, PDF or uh, video. Um, to take that existing content and turn it into a real, <laughs> real book, um, a real book on Amazon, um, of course, in ebook format for Kindle and in print book form. And so many authors, um, I think, are really overwhelmed by the idea of publishing on Amazon, publishing in real ways or on real channels um, that they they just don't consider 
One, the impact of the value of publishing on Amazon, a print book. Um, and two, they think it's going to be very overwhelming, very time and, and mental energy consuming um, pr to produce and publish and get the books to Amazon, um, but also to then promote and sell the books afterwards. So today I'm gonna share with you a couple of secrets, um, really, really smart, intelligent tricks, both to selling a large volume of books or, or just to selling your own books, maybe not necessarily a large volume, that's always going to be up to you and based on how, um, how much you want to promote your book. Um, oh, hi, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Thanks for joining in. Um, let me know uh, where you're watching from and um, what you're working on with your book. Um, and so what I'm going to talk to you today about is um, really the, the all that it takes to become a published book author, which is not that much, um, to, to turn your content from the book that it is, whether it's published on Amazon or published nowhere or not. Hello, Susan. Thank you for, for joining me locally. I'm in Toronto as well. <laughs> I love having local people here. Um, and uh, um, turning the content that you have, whether it's a PDF or um, a podcast that you're, that you're offering downloadable as an audio book, um, or video that you want to transcribe into a book, there's no reason why you shouldn't also take that extra step of publishing your content on Amazon in both ebook and print form. So the, the ebook edition is very easy. Um, Amazon, um, it's, it's really not a complex process to upload documents onto Amazon. Amazon charges you nothing upfront at all to place items up for sale on Amazon. They charge you a commission on your overall retail sales. And then at the end of the month, they send you your royalties, what is left over after their, after they take their chunk, which in all honesty, when you're uploading a book to Amazon, they make it so easy. And Amazon has, um, probably close to a million, if not more credit card, uh, credit card, credit card numbers on file of their existing customers who buy from them all the time. Amazon is probably the uh, number one or number two highest search engine optimized website on the internet. Um, perhaps Wikipedia would beat Amazon um, for, for Google searches. Um, but really when people search for keywords, very, very often when they're searching for a particular subject or, or no matter what it is that they're searching for on Google, when they search those keywords, very often the number one and number two pages that come up are Wikipedia and Amazon. And if you don't have your book on Amazon published, using those keywords, then they're not seeing your book on that Amazon um, uh, Amazon Google search engine result. So if you have your book up on Amazon, one of the strongest reasons to do so is because when people are then searching Google for the keywords of your expertise, of your subject matter, of your message that you're trying to get across, then there's a good likelihood because it's it's going to be much more difficult for you to get a page up on Wikipedia for your own name or for your own book. Um, although you can definitely add your book and links and articles that you've written about the topic um, to Wikipedia pages that have those keywords. So that's another thing that you might not have considered about marketing, um, getting your book into uh, onto the Wikipedia pages of the keywords that are relevant. So it does have to be relevant for your links to stay up there on Wikipedia, but um, just a suggestion. If you've never thought about it, most people have never thought about the marketing ideas that I suggest. So um, there's Wikipedia is there, but Amazon is so easy. Why wouldn't you?
right? It costs you absolutely nothing up front. If you don't want to do any marketing specifically on Amazon, then you don't have to, but you always have the link there that you can just put in your bio that you can put on your LinkedIn page, um, that you can put, you know, in various places, sprinkle it around and, and then do absolutely no active marketing and promotion after that. Other than when you give the link out, when you show the link to someone, when you're talking about your book, you can say, yeah, it's on Amazon, knowing full well that they're going to go search for it and find it and be impressed. Because if you have a book, but it's not on Amazon, what it says to people is that your book wasn't good enough to get published. Your book isn't good enough to... Um, uh, uh, to have a publisher select it or to have an agent select it and to have it get published. Most people are not really conscious or aware of publishing on Amazon. And therefore, if you are published on Amazon, you have more authority. Um, the other thing that it says is when you're published on Amazon, it says that you're taking yourself more seriously, that the content within your book is important and you want it to be out there for a worldwide st worldwide stage. If you publish a book and you make it very difficult for people to even know about or find because it's it's always behind an opt-in paywall, um, opt-in or paywall, um, then it makes it that much more difficult. So um, producing your published producing your print book in addition to the ebook content that you already have, which is very, very simple to produce. Um, if you have more questions, if, if you want my help directly to produce your ebook, I can definitely help you with that. Um, just reach out to me and DM, DM and um, I'll, I'll set up a, a call with you to help you out. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is the print book itself is virtually no extra cost and not a whole lot of extra effort. It's very easy to know um, or to make the decisions or to, to, to identify what are the key areas that you need to make decisions on as the author for your print book. Um, and this is going to be the subject of my deep dive in my masterclass community, the Authors Relaunch Community, which, um, you know, I don't think I shared the link with you yet. So let me do that now. Um, share that link with you so that you can take a look because I actually I was supposed to increase the price on the masterclass um, yesterday, but I haven't had a chance to do it yet um, because I'm adding in some more benefits um, and bonuses um, and making some changes, but I'm doing them offline before implementing them online. So um, the price is going to be increasing momentarily or hourly. <laughs> soon as soon as I get off this broadcast um, but if you if you're really interested in joining um, you can click through the link or send me a message and um, and I'll hook you up for sure um, but as I was saying it is the the subject of my master class this week on Tuesday um, I do a live deep dive training with the members of the master class community every Tuesday. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that it will stay every Tuesday, but that's where we are for now. Um, and it's at least an hour of training, sometimes more, um, plus Q and a on exactly what you're working on. So if producing a book is one of the things that you want to explore and you want to get into, um, joining my master class community will be one of the smartest decisions you make all year. Um, definitely the smartest decision you've made all year so far. <laughs> um, but uh, what I can say is um, I'm doing deep dive trainings every single Tuesday. This is creating my $2,000 
book publishing and promotions authority course um, that we'll be selling uh, next fall. So beginning next fall. So one of the things that we're going to go through on Tuesday is I'm going to go page by page through books and help you identify the exact process of making the decisions. Well, how do I decide everything about my book? How do I, um, uh, all the, the small decisions become very overwhelming very quickly um, for anyone who hasn't produced a print book before. And what I like to do to make it much, much easier for myself is I start by pulling books down off of my bookshelf. Now, I, I don't know if you're like me, but I always have at least one or two books um, within arm's reach. I have two on my desk right now, Napoleon Hill, and this one is held together with an elastic because I've read it so many times and I actually purchased this book, this copy um, 25 years ago, 27 years ago. <laughs> I purchased it 27 years ago and I have the original purchase receipt inside because I know exactly where and when I purchased it and why I purchased it. Um, and it's the most amazing book purchase I've ever made. <laughs> and then I have this, this book. Um, let me see if I can get it into the screen. Wedding Cake Murder. Um, that I just finished. Uh, sometimes I like to read um, just, you know, whatever, whatever sparks my interest when I'm at the bookstore, when I'm flying through an airport, or um, just when I'm passing by uh, those little free, what are they called? Little free libraries um, that people put outside uh, and organizations have outside of their, their doors. Um, I just, you know, I pick up whatever because I want to just expand my horizons and enjoy other styles of reading and other styles of books. Um, so I picked up this really fun book um, to, to use as a reference guide for publishing other print books. Um, and so I'm sure if you are an author, you probably have at least one book um, within arm's reach or within your home uh, that you can use as a reference guide as you're producing your own print book. What I like to do is pull three or four reference books um, that are within the same category as the book that I'm producing um, so that I have, I have that reference on the shelf. If my book were in a major retail store on the bookshelf in the properly placed on the category on the shelf um, with other authors who are my colleagues um, on the shelf beside my own book, what I want to know is what size are their books? <laughs> What colors are their books? How thick are their books? Um, I want to know all the physical elements of their book inside and out so that I then can make the decision the same as I do with my ebooks and also with my marketing is I observe everyone else so that I can then make the decision what I can do that is different and better that serves me and serves my reader. Um, so whenever I'm producing a book, um, and I've recently produced a couple of, um, light romance novels for authors. Um, and so this was one of the reference guides that I read. And, um, I really like this book in a lot of ways. Um, just the, the physical elements of it. Um, you can see up at the top, let me get this in the camera properly. So we have right here, New York Times bestselling author, excellent, excellent um, authority, trust trigger there. And uh, also, um, I like this, this title that she has developed for herself, The Queen of the Culinary Mystery. Um, and this is Wedding Cake Murder, uh, a Hannah Swenson mystery with recipes, which was part of why I bought it, because I was like, well, they put recipes right into a fiction novel, which is really interesting. Um, and it says it features over a dozen cookie 
and dessert recipes from the cookie jar, including coffee, chocolate coffee cake and butterscotch sugar cookies. Mm, yummy. Um, so it is, it is a fiction novel. Um, it's uh, um, smaller than the six by nine. So this is um, smaller. This is, yeah, it's a pocket book. Um, so you would produce yours in the smallest possible if you wanted to produce the same size as Joanna's book, um, which and very often for fiction um, print books, it is recommended to go as small as you can, because that way um, people, if, if especially if your reader is a woman, she can just place it into her purse or bag. Um, and for a man, it's it just makes it easier for the book to be um, transported, to be taken around with them, um, to be held and read for hours at a time. Um, so, no, you can't do this with KDP publishing, but they do have extra content on the inside front cover of the book. Um, so you would have to start publishing content on this page uh, if you went through Kindle Direct Publishing. So what happens with Kindle Direct Publishing um, is when you, when you want to publish your print book on Amazon, you can use their kin, uh, KDP Print on Demand Publishing, POD Publishing, which means that you do not have to buy a thousand copies of your book up front. Um, it is, it's, it's, uh, in all honesty, I find the pricing of Kindle KDP uh, or Kindle um, uh, KDP Print on Demand, I find their pricing actually to be just as good or better, including shipping. Um, than anywhere else that I found, especially including local printers. Unfortunately, local printers um, for print books, whether hard co cover or soft cover, um, I've been told things like um, every single book is hand bound. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at about $25 per copy or at least, uh, you know, a $500 setup fee and then probably you know, 10 to $20 per copy, um, <laughs> which is, you know, just not affordable. Um, most of the books, in fact, all of the books that I have published on KDP print on demand um, through Create Space previously, and now uh, through KDP have all been less than $5 per copy wholesale. Um, the price does not go down when you order more copies, um, but the price of shipping goes down when you order more copies. Um, when you order one single copy of your book, which you can do, um, you pay for shipping on one single copy of your book, which might be $14 or $12 um, US. And then, and then you pay for the book on top of it, um, which is wholesale for me. That's usually around uh, three twenty-five US um, wholesale per copy of the book. And then, um, and then you you have the books in your hand, in your possession, to be able to sell directly to customers. Um, so one of the things that is really, really smart that I've seen done that allows you a lot more control over Amazon pricing, because um, if you've been publishing your books to Amazon, um, especially over the last couple of months, I've seen a lot of authors talking about um, how Amazon is adjusting their pricing for them, um, which does happen occasionally. Amazon will, um, will in, in their own sort of like technical way, be promoting your book. Um, if they adjust your price down, you still get the same royalty. And I believe if you just, if they adjust your price up, you still get the same royalty as well. Um, so whatever you've priced your book at is the royalty that you will earn per copy sold, regardless of whether Amazon makes your book free as a promotion or increases the price. Um, both of which I have seen um, recently authors talking about. Um, hasn't happened to my books, um, but I haven't been really heavily promoting my own books. Um, so um, 
what you can do, one of the smartest things I've ever seen is you can manage the al Amazon algorithm of automatic pricing on your book um, by introducing competition to Amazon. Um, competition on pricing and competition on sales. And you do that on Amazon's own platform, um, which most authors are like, what, I can do that? Uh, yes, you can. Um, Amazon allows anyone to sell any book on Amazon's platform. Uh, if you look at book listings on Amazon, you'll see that they have um, uh, new and used listings right underneath the book listing. So it will say, you know, $13.99, whatever the price is for hardcover. And then new and used from other sellers on a little blue link right below that price um, where you where they're getting it, you know, new from Amazon print on demand versus buying it new or used from another seller. So that is through Amazon Seller Central. You would set up your, your own account to become a used bookseller on Amazon. Um, but the fact of the matter is you're only going to sell your own books and you're only going to sell brand new books, even though people are going to be buying them as uh, like new or lightly used, um, however you post them, you have the opportunity then to uh, reduce the price slightly lower than your own retail price on Amazon. Uh, the great thing about Amazon Seller Central is that you do get a higher royalty percentage on books sold than you would uh, through Amazon's own um, through KDP um, because these are intended to be used books. And when you sell through Amazon Seller Central, you're doing a lot more work to get the sale than just passively waiting for Amazon customers to find your book and buy it, uh, which is why Amazon charges a higher uh, percentage of the royalties on books sold through KDP versus books sold through Amazon Seller Central. Um, so that's that's one of the smartest things. Now, the other really smart thing is when you're driving people to purchase, uh, when, when people purchase your book through Amazon, you never get the customer name or email address or contact information or mailing address. Um, but if they're buying your print book through Amazon Seller Central, you can have them, uh, you can have it set up so that they pay for the shipping as well. And you just print out a shipping label when you get an order come through. Um, but you get the customer's name and um, address and you can connect with them and reach out to them when you're when you're packaging up your book. You can send them a letter um, communicating with them and saying, um, you know, I've upgraded your book uh, from like new or lightly used to a brand new book for free of charge. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please leave me a review. Here's the link on Amazon. Um, and uh, that, you know, from the people, it is one of the smartest strategies I've heard of. Um, the person who told me about it actually um, sells quite a few volume of books through this, this tactic um, because he also actively sells books directly through his website. Um, so it's one of the things that you can do. It's not impossible to sell books at all. If you have your garage currently full of a thousand copies of your book and you're trying to figure out how to get rid of them, um, my my number one recommendation is immediately set up that Amazon Seller Central account. Um, it will cost you probably 30, I think it's $29 a month um, to start with. Um, and then um, there's probably some extra costs uh, in addition to that. But, <laughs> um, but it gives you another way to start selling and promoting your books to Amazon directly. Um, and... Uh, you're, because you're printing your book, you're getting your author copies, if you're getting your author th copies through KDP print on demand, um, then it's very simple because you have the same login for everything. Um, so 
Now to format your book, this is the easiest part. Um, I'm just about done for today. Um, but formatting your book, all you want to do really, and, and I do have inside of my masterclass templates that make this a little bit easier that sort of give you the almost the checklist to go through when you're formatting your book. But really what I do is I take my reference materials, my reference books, like if I was going to be producing a light um, romantic novel, I would take my reference book and I go through every single page of the book and I make notes as to what they've put in and where it is in the book. So here, um, Wedding Cake Murder, um, this is uh, a, a a blurb of the story. It's not a description of the book, but it's a blurb of the story um, in the front page. Then she has a whole other list of all of her other books, um, all of the other Hannah Swenson mysteries, which it looks like there's about two dozen. Um, oh, going the wrong way, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and other novels that she's written the um, title page, uh, which in this case has a different image. This is uh, bouquet and she's got a wedding cake on the front. Very often it's the exact same image or almost even the image of the book title um, on the title page. Publisher disclaimer page is next. Acknowledgements is next. Oh, no, it's not acknowledgements. That would be the dedication is the short paragraph. And then acknowledgements is a couple of, uh, a number of pages, three full pages of acknowledgements. And, and she does the acknowledgements really, really well, exactly how I recommend all my authors do them. Um, she basically goes through and lists every single person who helped her with the book. Um, she says, thank you to all of these doctors, blah, blah, blah for putting up with my pesky Hannah book related medical and dental questions. Um, you know, thank you to these, uh, thank you to these people for wonderful recipes and giving me permission to use their names. Um, special thanks to my publicist. Thanks to food stylists and media guides. Um, and, and she, she gives some website addresses. She gives some email addresses. She goes really in depth into all the people that helped her write and create this book. Um, and this is, uh, Kensington. So traditionally published book. Um, and she's giving lots and lots and lots of credit. And every single one of these people listed in her acknowledgements in these three pages of acknowledgements are going to be proud that I'm positive that every single one of those people has a copy of the book on their bookshelf and is proud of their contribution, is proud of the fact that they've been named um, in this book. So you want to really take advantage of that. Then the other thing that I start to look at, so she, she has a blank page. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. She's got a blank page here and then it starts chapter one. Um, so what I start to look at is I look at what's in the chapter headings. How does, how does the format of the page begin? So in this case, she's got chapter one at the top and a little image here and here. Um, and then the text starts about two, uh, one third of the way down from the top of the page. Um, so I look at how do the chapter headings begin? And then I flip into the inside of the content and I confirm things like um, the, 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 the column, the single column per page is justified. What that means is that along the outside edge, you see the straight line because every row of text ends at the exact same spot. What that means is that you're going to see some spots in the text where there are larger spaces or smaller spaces in between the letters and the words because the, the um, software that is formatting the copy is making sure that the spacing between the words is correct, is proper, so that you have that really nicely justified edge. 
uh, the left and right outside edge, as well as the inside edge of the column is uh, equally the same, but that would be everywhere. So one of the clues that always tells me when a book has been uh, self-published and self-published with, with uh, usually for a very often a first time author, uh, their first time self-publishing, you'll see the book being left justified, meaning that this outside edge is all at different ends. And it personally, I find it looks really unprofessional. It looks very pedestrian and it makes your look, your book look like you rushed through the process. So you obviously self-published um, and didn't take your time to make sure that you were producing a quality, uh, quality product. Um, and that, that is one of the very few places where I look and I see, oh, wow, this really doesn't look very good. Um, so moving on, the other thing that I take a look at is I look at the top and bottom and corners of the pages. So top, top, corner, corner, uh, and bottoms have nothing in this particular book. Sometimes the page number is at the bottom. Sometimes there's more information at the bottom. It's all things that you can make decisions on. Um, and what she has at the top of the page is the author name on the left side and the book name on the right side. And that's it. Uh, and then she's got the page number in the outside corner. Um, she also has, now this is, I mean, this is a very different book. So she's got um, these little uh, images that, oh, <laughs> that show up to indicate, she's got these images above, uh, along the top um, to indicate that she's getting to recipes. So this is the story part. And here we're getting into recipes. Um, and they're like, it says, you know, so this is vanilla nutmeg sauce. Um, and she's got recipes and, and within the recipe, there is just a hint of story sometimes, sometimes just a hint of story, uh, within the chapters. So, uh, that is the inside content, uh, the, the, interior content of the manuscript itself. Um, then I go all the way through, blah, 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 check out all the recipes. Then I go to the end, I check out the back of the story. So what, how does the story and the last final chapter end? Um, in this one, um, so it, it ends and then on the very last page, she has an index of every recipe and what page it's on. Um, then, so, and look, there's, there's at least a half dozen more pages. After the book ends, <laughs> this is where the book ends, and here's how many more pages of content there is, right? So what else goes into the print book? And this is page 364 is where the book ends. Uh, she has a baking conversion chart on the next page. And then um, New York Times bestselling author. So this is sort of like an an invitation. New York Times bestselling author Joanna Fluke and Hannah Swenson, who is the fictional character, um, invite you to an exclusive sneak peek of Hannah's wedding reception. Um, which is taking place within moments of the end of the story. Um, and then it goes into uh, two and a half pages of story continuing of um, the wedding reception. And then it's got another ooh, five, six, eight pages of recipes. Um and then they're talking about um, a romantic 10-day cruise is the perfect start to bakery owner Hannah Swenson's marriage. However, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's getting into the next book in the series. And the next book is, you know, beginning with her, her honeymoon. Um, so it says it's got the, the introduction in italics. It's got a paragraph. Um, 
uh, a story blurb about uh, the print, the next print book. And then it says at the bottom, this paragraph in bold, please turn the page for an exciting sneak peek of Joanna Fluke's newest Hannah Swenson mystery, Banana Cream Pie Murder, coming soon wherever print and ebooks are sold. And chapter one. <laughs> right? So she goes straight into chapter one, um, which all goes all the way to the very last page. And then on the inside back cover, again, she, here she has her author um, about the author page and then back cover with the description. Um, so ultimately, while I do have the template that makes it much, much easier for you to um, go through the checklist and decide what do I want for every single one of these elements of my book. And it's, and it's basically everything that you um, are going to have to consider in advance of uploading your book to Amazon. Um, it will cost you nothing, like I've said earlier, to upload your book to Amazon. Um, but you do want to have these decisions made. You want to have your book fully formatted and, um, as perfect as you can envision it um, before you upload it, especially the print book. It does need to be um, perfect. The file needs to be perfect. So you will need to hire someone to format your book. Um, it, it is simply a PDF um, to upload the print book, but to get that PDF uh, with the pages in exactly the right spot and the paragraphs exactly how you like them and the images exactly where you want them um, and any other special things that this is where you really get to decide what you as the author want inside of your book and how you want it to look and feel. Um, these decisions are all within the list that you need to make, but that's all it takes. It doesn't take any more cost. It, it really doesn't take any more time. I usually publish both print and ebook for my authors at the same time. In fact, I usually hire the exact same person to finalize the formatting of um, both the print and ebook. Um, and I have them send me the ebook in EPUB, .mobi, and PDF. Um, I have them send me the uh, adjusted and final formatted Word version so that if the author wants to change or myself wants to change uh, any of the change or edit or correct any typos, like change any of the text or any of the pages on the inside. Um, so that we have the, the formatted version to try at least and try and upload it ourselves without needing to get it reformatted. Um, and then the print book itself is, it is a PDF. Um, uh, yeah, it's the, the print book is PDF, but it's laid out PDF like this, not laid out PDF like a downloadable PDF ebook would be. So your ebook is not... Your, your ebook PDF is not the same as your print book PDF, if that makes sense, um, but they come from the same place. So they, they all start from the same place. They're all kind of like twins of your manuscript. You, you, we send the initial full manuscript over to the format person and they finalize um, the print cover. Now, the, the other thing that you do want to keep in, in mind and be very cognizant of is the size of the spine, the thickness of the spine, is determined by the number of pages on the inside. So the number of pages on the inside is determined by the width and height dimension, the size of each page. Um, and the size of each text, uh, the, the size of the font that's being selected will help determine how many pages within the book. Um, so if you want to have a book that is larger, if your book is only 50 to 75 pages at the most right now, it can be very easily formatted into a print book that is over 110 pages, um, which would have a spine thick enough to 
print both the title and your name onto it. Now this is a, a thick novel, so there's lots of space on the spine. Um, but you wanna be aware of, of things like the color of the paper, whether the paper is white or cream, makes a difference in the size of the thickness of the paper, which will impact the size of the spine of your cover file. <laughs> <laughs> and cover files are weird to look at because it's always the back cover. Oh, my mirrored. It's always the back cover that shows up on the left side and the front cover on the right side. Um, and the text of the book needs to be, uh, yeah, it is correct. The text of the book on, on the spine needs to be in the direction so that the, when the book lays flat, with the, with the cover up, that the text is readable. So it can be stacked on a shelf this direction and be readable. This direction would not be readable, right? If they, if they mix the spine up. And I have had sometimes designers um, not notice that they've mixed that up. Um, but you just, you wanna think about these small details and that's really all it takes for um, producing your print book. It is, it's, it's very much a project management um, project or project management challenge. Um, and that's why I'm really good at it because I was a media buyer for many, many years. So moving small details and managing small details of large multi-million dollar projects is, is what I do. Um, so all that being said, I hope I've inspired you to take the, the print book or the print content that you are giving away that you're using as an opt-in. Why not keep it in your funnel, give it away for free as an, as a lead magnet, as an opt-in, um, but also have the exact same book, which is valuable content, have it available for sale on Amazon um, in both ebook and print format. Um, it can really truly enhance what you're trying to communicate. Um, it, what it does is it opens up eyes and ears when you are a published best-selling book author versus not. Um, you have more authority and more influence when you're a published book author. Um, it's just natural in society. We, we respect, we appreciate people who have uh, gone through the effort and gone through all of the, um, uh, the gatekeepers of publishing to actually become published authors. Um, so, it, 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 it almost kills me every time when I see people announcing their, their new book, um, but they have no intention and they're not going to produce it on, on Amazon. They're not going to have it available wo worldwide for people to even look at and review and just be aware that the book exists, even though, yes, they can get it either free or cheaper directly for you. And that's exactly what you want to do. Um, it's always going to be beneficial just to have it there for sale. And there's no, you don't have to actually pressure yourself to sell the book on Amazon at all. Um, you can literally use it just for authority just to, to demonstrate, to know that when people are searching for those keywords um, and Amazon comes up, that your book also is likely to come up with it if, you, if you've optimized your book um, for, for keywords and for searches. Um, so thank you everyone for, for tuning in who watched today. I know I didn't have um, much opportunity to share it with you beforehand, but I am really excited about all the content we have coming in the free group. Um, the group is called Book Publishing Sales and Promotion Secrets for Authors and Entrepreneurs. And um, it is at Facebook slash facebook.com slash groups slash bestseller book publishing is the um the nickname <laughs> the the shortened name of the uh group 
And then uh, the masterclass, if you're interested in joining my masterclass and community uh, where you will be receiving, uh, I do live deep dive trainings every single week. So I will be going into a deep dive training details, sharing every single instruction and details so that you can get your book published and set up and produced all on your own. Um, but with my, with my help, um, with the templates that I've created that I use with all of my private clients, um, with my suggestions, if you're stuck and with the support of the community, if you have, um, you know, issues that you want to discuss or things that you want to have a second set of eyes on, um, before you send things out. So the, the main focus of the community is book promotions, um, publishing is one of the things that I am passionate about, um, publishing in as many formats as you possibly can, as you can imagine, um, because I'm so passionate about media channels and I've worked in, in and with media channels, um, well, the truth is for uh, more than 40 years, because my very first job in media was when I was five years old. So uh, I, I will tell you that story another time if you ask me. But um, my career in media has been um, since 1995. So that would be 20 years now, 25 years. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, so one of the things that has always the reason why I'm a book publisher is because because I came from traditional media, because I came from television and radio and newspapers and magazines and out of home advertising, where it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars um, to be able to advertise advertise your message to be able to put it out there um, in front of these established audiences. And when I realized that um, Amazon book publishing existed in the way that it did, and I started publishing and testing books on publishing books on Amazon as a test just to see how much they would sell or what I could create or what limitations actually exist of which there really is almost none. Um, I, I started to discover, wow, anyone the Amazon, what Amazon has truly done for book publishing is they've democratized book publishing and made it so that anyone with an internet connection um, and something to say, whether it's well-written, well-produced or not, um, can produce it, uh, can, can upload it onto Amazon and have it for sale worldwide, which is amazing. Um, so I want to invite you to join the masterclass or um, if you're interested, uh, the price is uh, the lowest you're ever going to see it ever, ever again. Um, so I do, I welcome you to join me if you're interested or reach out if you have questions. Um, what we focus on in the masterclass and community is building your authority um, and mostly through methods that are um, relatively unique to me. It's not that no one has ever taught this before or will again. Um, and it's not that I didn't learn it from anybody. But for the most part, what I focus on teaching is the unique elements of building your authority that I've discovered work, that work for me, that, that go against what is normally taught, what is normally told, um, but have absolutely worked to develop um, massive publicity, both in Canada and the United States, um, and clients in a publishing business that is global, truly global. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate everyone today, and um, I will see you next week. Take care.